What's up guys? It's your boy Jay. Welcome to Jay's World. So let's talk. You know how we do it. So let's get into it. And welcome to another edition of Jay Topics. Y'all, can you believe it? This is the actual first J Topics video of 2020. Woo! Yeah! Uh, uh, what's up, y'all? What's up? We made it over and we bringing it in right. And check this out. Uh huh. Uh huh. Check this out. Yeah! Look at that, baby. Jay's World t shirts, baby. Woo! Come on now. Come on. What? Yeah, look at that, look at that, look at that. Uh-huh, uh-huh. I ain't playing with y'all this year. I ain't playing with y'all. <laughs> I got a lot of exciting things happening on my channel, okay? So, with all of that said, um, my first topic, unfortunately, is a sad one. And I really hate to kick off my the first topic of Jay's World TV with a sad one, but we've got to cover it. If you guys have not heard... Bobby Christina's ex-boyfriend or ex-life partner or whatever he was to her at that time, Nick Gordon has died. He was only 30 years old. Apparently, uh, TMZ and other news sites are reporting that he died of an apparent drug overdose. Uh, they said on New Year's night or New Year's day, I'm not sure what time that it happened, but basically the people that he was doing drugs with um, he overdosed and they just pulled up to the hospital and literally dumped that boy out in front of the hospital. <sighs> Y'all, that it is just so, so incredibly, incredibly sad. I, I could not believe the news when I heard about it. I honestly couldn't. I was like, are you kidding me? Are you serious with this? Not only is it incredibly sad, but just the irony of the whole thing. I mean, think about it. This young man, to my knowledge, was in a very bad situation when he was a little boy. And Whitney Houston actually took him in and pretty much adopted him. Remember, guys, way back in the day when, uh, uh, when we would see Whitney Houston sometimes on the red carpet or in an interview and she would talk about her son, Nick? Well, you know, that was the little boy. And he was pretty much raised with Bobby Christina. You know, she took him in. And she, like I said, she raised him as her son. And of course, Nick and, and Bobby Christina, they connected somehow. And they became boyfriend and girlfriend. And the whole thing just turned really weird. And it had lots of crazy twists and turns. So, you know, I'm not sure if... Whitney was all that happy about them connecting. I, To my knowledge, I know Bobby definitely wasn't happy about them being uh, connected as a couple. And of course, there was just drugs involved and there was just drugs all over the place. And what's really ironic about the whole situation, Whitney Houston, of course, she died of a drug overdose. Then a couple years later, Bobby Christina died of a drug overdose. And then, what, four or five years later, if I'm not mistaken, now Nick, a drug overdose. Isn't that crazy? Can you believe all three of these people in this picture, they're all gone, dead from drugs? It's, it's just so incredibly, incredibly sad and so ironic and, and, and it, it kind of freaks me out a little bit. You know, I, I hate to say this, but it, it almost seems as if that whole situation was cursed on some level. I don't know. I know. I, I know, guys. It, it, I, I'm not a superstitious person, but it just seems really, really weird. You know, just very sad. And God bless uh, this young man. Uh, may he finally get the rest that he needs. Um, you know, God bless his family. Uh, who are who surviving him? I hear that he has at least one surviving brother that I know of, and his brother took to uh, Twitter and said all he could do was cry. Uh, no one has heard from Bobby uh, Brown, so they really don't know what Bobby is thinking. I do know uh, during that time, a couple years ago, Bobby Brown had had filed a lawsuit against Nick Gordon. You know, uh, pretty much blaming him for the death of Bobby Christina. So. I really don't know what where Bobby Brown is in terms of his headspace and how he feels about the situation. But nevertheless, it's just really, really sad and, and ironic. 
and a little creepy. You know, it, it's just really weird how all three of these people are now gone. So God bless uh, Nick Gordon's family and, and my condolences to that family. And I just hope that, you know, God gives them the strength to get through this whole thing. So rest in peace, Nick Gordon. Okay, uh, next I want to talk about Kanye West and super mega pastor Joel Osteen. These two are collabing, y'all. <laughs> Apparently, uh, Kanye West uh, called Joel Osteen, and now they are connecting. Apparently, they're going they're going to go on some type of little mini tour uh, this summer. Uh, they'll be meeting at Yankee Stadium for a concert and. Y'all, yeah, look, <laughs> I really don't know what to make of this whole thing, you know, and I'll be honest, I'm not the biggest Joel Osteen fan. I'm sorry, y'all, it's just something about him that weirds me out. It, it, it honestly is, and it's just something about the way he smiles. I, I, I have a thing about people that smile a lot, you know, I know he claims that he's just feeling the love of the Lord and He's so happy and so blessed and so favored. And maybe that genuinely is how he feels. And maybe that is how he thinks. But there's just something that creeps me out about Joel Osteen. And something that in me that just gives me pause about him. The man smiles too much for my own comfort level. You know, and I just feel that there's something behind that smile. And let's not forget, what was this like a year or so ago? When he locked all of those people out during that flood in Texas. You know, and they, they had to clean up that whole mess. He claimed that his church was locked because, well, I forget what he said the reason was, but he had that whole thing going on. And I don't know. It's just something about Joel Osteen that does not feel right to me. You know, I don't know. You guys let me know. How do you feel about Joel Osteen? You know, maybe some of you guys really don't care, but there's just something about him that just weirds me out. And as far as Kanye West is concerned, look, y'all. Kanye is going to be Kanye. You know, I'm, I'm just pretty much at that point with Kanye right now. You know, back in the day, I used to be a super huge Kanye West fan. You know, I love the old Kanye West, you know, back in the day with the, uh, you know, that first album that he made with the teddy bear, you know, with the backpack and all of that stuff or whatever. Those first two CDs were just mega, mega hits and I love them. So whenever I want to really connect with Kanye, I always go back to his first and second CDs. They were just awesome, awesome, awesome music, you know. Uh, this new stuff that Kanye's doing right now, I don't know, it just comes across a little gimmicky to me, and it's like now Kanye's on this whole church thing, and he, he's connecting with Joel Osteen, you know, he still has connect, his connections with uh, 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 the, the tangerine colored president that's in office right now. So he's got that whole thing going on. And to be honest, I'm not even sure where Joel Olstein stands in terms of his um, political stance. So I'm, I'm, I'm side eyeing that too. So y'all, Joel Olstein and, and Kanye West, they're connecting. Are y'all going to go see them in concert this summer? Is that a ticket that you would like to purchase? Uh, I'm good on Joel Osteen and Kanye West collabing. I don't need to pay my good hard-earned money to see them. But if y'all want to go see them, go right ahead. Waste your money. I'm good on both of those characters. All right. So, last but not least, I would like to talk about good times. Yeah, good times. <laughs> That's right. Okay. Did you guys catch uh, the good times uh, live show uh, on ABC? Uh, it happened about a week or so ago, and I really wanted to talk about it, but I was on my little mini vacation, you know what I'm saying, during the holidays, you know, spending time with my family and friends, but nevertheless, I still wanted to talk about it. Did you guys get a chance to see it, and what did you think? Personally, I did not like it. I really honestly didn't like it, and to be honest, I'm one of those people, look, Anyone that knows me will tell you I am a die-hard Good Times fan, okay? I mean, I, I don't play about Good Times. And if you're going to do a Good Times reboot or a live cast, I need you to come correct with it. And I really don't feel that they came correctly with it. Now, Norman Lear, 
you know, he is the producer of Good Times, and Norman Lear is the uh, is a legend unto himself. He produced Good Times, All in the Family. Oh gosh, what else? Oh, oh Lord. There's so many of those shows back in the day, back during that era, and they really were brilliant shows, okay? But here's my problem with the Good Times reboot slash live show. I really feel that it was just a complete miscast. I didn't like any of the people that they cast in those characters. I hated the fact that they cast uh, uh, Tiffany Haddish as Wallona. That was a complete miscast, you know. She didn't evoke anything about uh, that character. Um, a total miscast and a, and, and a ball drop was when they cast Kareem Fox, Jamie Foxx's daughter, as, as Thelma. Are you kidding me? I'm like, what were they thinking? And I'll be honest, I'm I'm really feeling some kind of way because I really honestly wanted Portia Williams from Real Housewives of Atlanta to play Thelma. You guys, that would have been the perfect Thelma. I mean, think about it. Portia Williams looks so much like Bernadette Stannis, it is freaky, okay? I mean, she sounds like Bernadette Stannis. She has a great body like Bernadette Stannis. And she really would have been greatly cast for that role. And of course, they had my boy, uh, uh, John Amos. Now, he didn't play James, but he did play Alderman Davis in that particular episode of, of, of that show that they did that night. <sighs> As much as I love John Amos, I felt that it was the, the role was just a bit too much for him. You know, John Amos is 79 years old, okay? We're talking about a man that is almost 80 years old. And I felt that there were just too many lines, you know, and the pressures of it being a live show. And he actually missed a couple lines. And unfortunately, um, the young man, I forget his name. He's a brilliant actor as well. He saved John in that one of uh, in that one scene. So, it, it, don't get me wrong. It was great seeing John Amos, but I really, really felt that that particular role was a bit too much for an eighty-year-old man. You know, let's let's face it. John Amos is not the man he used to be back in the day. You know, again, this is el this is an elderly man. So. It was just a bit much for him, but I'm glad he got through it. And it was just really nice seeing him. And at the end of the show, they brought out um, the original Bernard, uh, Thelma, Bernard Stannis. They brought out uh, JJ, uh, Jimmy Walker. And who else? Oh, and they brought out uh, 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 Janet Dubois, uh, who plays Wallona. <sighs> Lord have mercy. Okay, look, I'm... I'm Y'all, don't get mad at me, okay? Don't get mad at me. I love Janet DuBois. She's a beautiful woman. She's always been an attractive woman. Very vivacious and very sexy. But is it me? Or is Janet DuBois just hitting the Botox a little heavy these days? Uh, again, Janet DuBois, I believe, if I'm, not, if I'm not mistaken, she and uh, John Amos are around about the same age. She's almost 80 years old herself. And her face was blown up like a grapefruit, y'all. I mean, she had so much Botox and filler in her face. It looked weird, y'all. It just looked really, really weird. It honestly did. And I just, <laughs> and I hate that. Don't get me wrong. I mean, you can still tell it was Jenna DuBois. But let's just say her face was a little altered. <laughs> it honestly was. But nevertheless, it was good to see the cast members that they brought out. All right, guys, that's it. That's all I got. Please don't forget to rate, comment, and do what? Subscribe. Please subscribe to my channel. What are you waiting on? You're already over here. And after you subscribe, please don't forget to hit the bell notification because when you hit that bell notification, YouTube will send you notifications of all of my latest videos and you too can be down with the notification squad. That's it guys, that's all I got and I'll holler at you later. Peace.